Let's get to the flip, you know, where we de debate, take polar opposite, pretend debate, just like a lot of older shows like Crossfire on CNN. I think there's a show on uh, ESPN as well, but hey, let's, let's go in. So the topic, as I said, is can Google unseat OpenAI as the new benchmark of AI? Let's flip the coin. All right, Daniel, you are for that Google is going to unseat OpenAI as the new benchmark for, uh, for AI. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, this one's so easy. I'll keep it short, Pat. Um, OpenAI has models. That's it. Google has everything. Google is the full stack. Google has the data. Google has its cash flow, so it doesn't have to borrow money and burn cash and lose a fortune for the next five years. Uh, Google has its own infrastructure. It has TPUs, seven generations. It's being able to build successful models on its own. It's got its research teams, just like OpenAI does, side to side. And it's got a much better operating leverage than OpenAI does. So, you know, I kind of hit that in, in, in the first part, but this one's pretty straightforward to me. You know, OpenAI is the beneficiary. They were the first out of the gate, but they will not be the biggest. They will not be the best. They do not have the tools and the keys to be successful in the long term. And what are those tools and keys? Money, infrastructure, money, data. So you look down the list, Pat, and to me, it's basically very simple. Um, OpenAI came out first, had the benefit of an early mover advantage, but in the end, the performance, the model, uh, the model improvements are slowing. In the end, the amount of capital intensiveness that it requires to continue to build this stuff is exponentially higher. In the end, the ability to continue to raise capital that they're gonna need to raise to be able to get to profitability is now five, six, seven years out. You, see, you hear Google's head of infrastructure say that every six months you have to double compute capacity. That means that these incredible trillion and a half dollars of spend that OpenAI is gonna to need to make may even be more. And they're gonna to need to raise even more money. And if you look at the way the economy is, if you just look at the way the world is, is, is looking at what OpenAI has done, the commitments it's made, it basically does not believe it can get there. All the while, you've got Google, the most profitable company in the world this year. They will make more cash than any other company in the world, including Apple. And they will be able to put that cash to work to be able to hire, build infrastructure, expand data centers, invest in LLMs and research. And by the way, they've got massive estates like YouTube and Search that continue to provide the world with the most important data. And they run enterprises. Google Cloud has enterprise data. And as we know, a huge part of the unlock is still having access to inside the enterprise and all that data that is not available to Sam Altman and OpenAI, no matter how bad they want to steal it from the world, use it to train models and not pay anything. So the TLDR here is, it's all very simple. You can be the best LLM, but that gap is getting closed with every new generation of model that comes out. That's not just Google, that's open source models, that's Anthropic, and that's everyone else. They're fighting battles and demons from every side now. They've got Amazon after them, they've got Microsoft after them, they've got Google after them, they've got Anthropic after them, they've got Quen after them, they've got DeepSeek after them, and they don't have all the other tools in the toolbox. Right now, if I'm gonna place my bets, I want it on the one that has the cash flow, that has the operating leverage, that has the customers, and that has the ability to basically continue to build with much less risk and within three years, you will see Google is greater than opening. I mean, Daniel, that was a nice, simple argument. Probably one of your best, one of your better ones. But uh, you know, you're you're completely wrong. OpenAI remains the king. First of all, uh, when any person on the street, a student, thinks about AI, uh, they think about ChatGPT. I'm going to use ChatGPT. Okay, it's like Kleenex now, right? Nobody's saying, "Hey, I need to go Gemini this or um, you know, maybe they say, maybe they say Google search when they want to search, but when they want to AI, it's chat GPT. And I still think that, um, chat GPT or open AI has reasoning leadership. I mean, Oh, one strawberry pretty much proved 
uh, that OpenAI is still a generation ahead on thinking uh, versus predicting. And we'll see with, uh, with 3.0 uh, what happens here. Uh, ChatGPT has a 73% market share. And yeah, oh my God, it's down from 100%, right? Let's, let's panic, panicans. Uh, I get that. But you have this company that, that is you know, 5% of the size of Google with 73% uh, market share. Something is, is, is going on here. And I think what that shows is developer loyalty. Let's talk about enterprise trust. Listen, Google Cloud is awesome. It's still the number three, potentially going to be the number four player when Oracle ramps up. Uh, but um, when it talks about enterprise trust, it's through Microsoft. And Microsoft is OpenAI's proxy. They own the CIO relationship. A enterprise security teams trust Azure and OpenAI. And they still view Google Cloud as a distant number three for mission critical uh, apps. Um, let, my final point, which is probably the better one here, the best one is OpenAI and ChatGPT are just too big to fail. You have uh, AMD, you have NVIDIA. Like what happens if OpenAI fails, right? Uh, Gemini does nothing with GPUs, right? Uh, Google was very clear on that. Gemini 1, 2, 2.5, and 3 uh, did not use GPUs um, uh, at all. The, you know, Jensen did bring up GPUs, which was interesting related to Gemini. But um, yeah, so maybe a little bit of confusion there. But uh, uh, Google itself is saying it was all it was all TPU. So when you have undoubtedly the most powerful and influential company in the world, which is NVIDIA, that needs OpenAI to succeed, where do you think this story is going here? Okay, and then you've got AMD and the alignment and the investment um, uh, across companies uh, through there as well. AMD has to uh, see uh, OpenAI as as successful. So, you know, with that, Daniel, uh, good good try, but I win. Well, there you go. There you go. Did you win? I don't know. It's good to see you so excited today, Daniel. You know, it's just, uh, you know, top of your game, feeling good, really excited for this. I love you, buddy.